Welcome back to Brookfield University, and welcome to all of our first-time viewers. Hi, I'm Mark Koholan from Ambitech Brookfield. Today's module will cover the basic principles of viscometer operation. We'll discuss the components of the viscometer, how they function, and how they impact test results. So what are the principles of viscometer operation? As we learned in the previous module, viscosity measurements are made by attaching a spindle connected to the viscometer motor through a calibrated spring and rotating the spindle while immersed in the test sample. The viscous drag of the fluid against the spindle causes the calibrated spring to deflect. This deflection is known as percent torque. In the case of the dial viscometer seen here, a pointer is attached directly to the spring and moves with the spring as it is deflected by the viscous drag of the sample on the spindle. The dial pointer travels almost 320 degrees from 0 to 100 on the dial face. When using a dial viscometer, we recommend waiting for five revolutions to reach a steady state before taking a reading. Once the spring is stabilized, the position of the pointer on the dial will show a percent torque from 0 to 100. This percent torque reflects the resistive force of the sample against the rotating spindle. This percent torque is multiplied by a factor found by using a factor finder based on the spindle, speed, and spring range used for the test. All readings should be taken between 10 and 100 percent torque. Readings below 10 percent are not considered accurate because of the spring design. A stepper motor is used to provide precise speed control and can be set to rotate at specific speeds to perform rheological studies of your material. In this image, we see a digital viscometer. The operator no longer has to read a pointer on a dial or use a factor to calculate viscosity. The operating principles are the same for all our instruments, but in this case, the spring deflection is measured using a torque transducer, which electronically converts to viscosity and displays results on the screen. Rather than the 320 degree deflection of the dial viscometer spring, the digital spring deflects only 70 degrees from 0 to 100% torque. This small amount of deflection of the spring to reach 100% torque means that there's no waiting for five revolutions for the spring to stabilize. Torque tends to stabilize within 30 seconds of operation regardless of speed. The percent torque can easily be observed on the screen when testing, and once it is stabilized to within plus or minus 0.2% torque, a reading can be taken. You'll also notice that all our viscometers have either a bubble level affixed to the instrument or an electronically displayed bubble level. It's very important to have the instrument level for all testing. This aligns the spindle suspension system, allowing for an accurate measurement of the fluid's resistance to flow. This suspension, shown here with the jewel bearing, is protected by the pivot cup. The synthetic sapphire jewel supports the point of the spindle shaft that rests on the jewel. Any out-of-level condition will result in the point not being centered in the jewel, adding mechanical resistance to the spindle. This will affect the instrument's accuracy. Here's a close-up view of the point and jewel suspension. As you can see, the pivot point is attached to the spindle shaft and it rests in the pivot support assembly that holds the jewel bearing. Most jewel damage is usually a result of operator error when attaching or removing the spindle. The point and jewel suspension must be used for LV or low viscosity spring range instruments to provide the most friction-free suspension. There are two types of spindle suspensions, point and jewel and ball bearing. Most instruments use a point and jewel suspension due to its low dynamic resistance. The ball bearing suspension was designed as a replacement to the point and jewel for a more robust suspension system. To minimize or prevent jewel damage, it's important to learn this lesson when attaching or removing the spindle. All operators should be taught to raise the coupling nut with one hand and attach the spindle with the other hand. This method will minimize or prevent jewel damage. Equally important, avoid horizontal or sideways force on the coupling nut or install spindle. This can damage the jewel and bend the spindle shaft internally. Again, the ball bearing suspension is only available for spring ranges RV, HA, and HB. 
The ball bearing suspension is standard on all HB range Wells Brookfield comb plate rheometers. It's an option for the RV, HA, and HB range instruments. The use of the guard leg applies only to LV and RV range instruments. Its initial use was to offer some protection to the spindle and suspension. Many years ago, the dial instrument was a handheld viscometer, and it was very easy to bump the spindle in use. Today, it still offers limited protection to the spindle from vertical and lateral damage. It must be used when performing calibration checks on any LV or RV range instruments, regardless of the spindle chosen for the calibration check. For accurate results when using the LV spindles 1 or 2 or the RV spindles 1 or 2, the guard leg should be used. Without it, the chamber diameter is slightly increased, resulting in less fluid resistance and a lower reported viscosity. If you have never used it with the LV1 or 2 or the RV1 or 2 spindles in your facility, that's perfectly fine. As long as you continue to perform your current method without it, nothing will change. However, if you're going to publish a product data sheet using an LV or RV1 or 2 spindle, it's wise to use a guard leg to report viscosity. Guard legs also come in different lengths depending upon your spindle coupling system. The Easy Lock coupling system is longer than the standard threaded spindle, which requires the guard leg to be lengthened. You can see the difference between the threaded coupling guard legs on the right and the lengthened Easy Lock guard legs on the left. Also, the Quick Connect adapter for threaded spindles adds length to the standard spindle and requires a modified guard leg. The new magnetic coupling system has been designed to use the standard LV and RV guard legs. When purchasing an instrument, a set of the appropriate range spindles are included along with the stand. For the LV range, a set of four LV spindles are provided, and for the RV, HA, or HB range, a set of six spindles are provided. One note, the RV1 and RV2 spindles are slightly different from the HA and HB1 and 2 spindles due to the requirement of using a guard leg with the RV range instrument. The difference is not visible to the eye, so if you have an RV range instrument and either an HA or an HB range instrument, take care to use the correct spindle for each instrument. The RV one or two spindles are stamped 01 or 02 and should be used on the RV range instrument. The H01 or H02 should be used on the HA or HB range instruments. There are also three types of spindle coupling. The easy lock, now discontinued, the magnetic coupling, and the threaded coupling. Easy lock items are still available for those of you who have this coupling system. The replacement coupling for easy lock is the new magnetic coupling. Attaching a magnetic spindle is now a one-handed operation. It's simply aligned with the magnetic coupling nut on the instrument and the magnet then retains it. This coupling system results in the least stress on the suspension system and would be recommended for anyone who's experienced damage to the jewel due to improper attachment or removal of spindles. The threaded coupling is the traditional standard spindle coupling system. With the threaded coupling system, it's very important to follow the recommendation of lifting and holding the coupling nut while attaching or removing the spindle. Notice that on each spindle, there's an immersion mark just above the disc to the right. This immersion mark should be set at the surface of your sample. Not enough immersion will lead to lower fluid resistance, and if submerged too deeply, a higher fluid resistance. Here you can see an LV4 spindle and guard leg performing a test with a general purpose silicone fluid. Using the proper container with an internal diameter of 3 and 1 quarter inches, for example a 600 ml low form Griffin beaker, the container must be filled high enough to allow the immersion mark of the spindle in use to be set at the surface of the sample. Laboratory stands have evolved throughout the years and with newer model instruments. The Model A was used for all dial and DVE viscometers until recently. The Model S was used for DV1 and DV2 instruments. Today, only two lab stands are offered with all models, either the Model G or the Model QB. I recommend the Model G for use with standard spindles because its height adjustment knob allows for very precise placement of the immersion mark in the sample. The Model QB is great for all accessories, allowing for quick up and down movement for installing or removing the accessory or sample. 
I hope this training module has helped you gain an understanding of the components of the instrument, how they function together, as well as the importance of proper operator training. In the next training module, I'll discuss the variables that affect viscosity measurements. If you have any questions regarding this training module, call 508-946-6200 or visit brookfieldengineering.com. We'll gladly answer any questions you may have.